This is Sam Brock's reading of Steve Scafidi's To Whoever Set My Truck on Fire. But let us be friends a while and understand our differences are small and that they float like dust in sunny rooms. And let us settle into the good work of being strangers, simply who have something to say in the middle of the night. For you have said something that interests me, something of flames. Footsteps and the hard, heavy charge of an engine gunning away into the June cool of four in the morning here in West Virginia, where last night I woke to the sound of a door slamming, five or six fading footsteps, and through the window saw my impossible truck bright orange like a maverick sun, and ran, I did, panicked in my underwear, bobbling the dumb extinguisher, too complex it seemed for putting out fires, and so grabbed the skillet and jumped about like one needing to piss while the faucet-like honey issued its slow, sweet water. And you, I noticed, then were watching from your idling car far enough away that I could not make your plate number, but you could see me, half naked, figuring out the puzzle of a fire 30 seconds from a dream never to be remembered while the local chaos of a growing fire crackled through the bo books and boots burning in my truck, you bastard. You watched as I sprayed, finally, the flames with a garden hose under the moon. And yes, I cut what was surely a ridiculous figure there, and worsened it later that morning after the board police drove home lazily and I stalked the road in front of my house with an axe in my hand and walked into the road after every car to memorize the plates of who might have done this. LB7329, NT7663. And you may have passed by, I don't know, you may have passed by as I committed the innocent numbers of neighbors to memory. And maybe you were miles away, and I, like the woodsmans of fairy tales, threatened all with my bright axe shining with the evil joy of vengeance and mad hunger to bring harm, heavy harm, to the coward who did this. And if I find you, my friend, I promise you, I will lay the sharp blade deep into your body until the human gravid hands of what must be death have mercy and take you away from the constant murderous swinging my mind makes, my words make, swinging down on your body, and may your children weep a thousand tears at your small and bewildered grave. I chose this poem because of the imagery that is um, brought to mind as I read through the poem. It starts off as a very you know nice and calm poem, like dust in a room, um, with sunlight coming in, very tranquil, and then uh, it gets very harsh whenever uh, he, this man's woken up by his truck being caught on fire. And it really hit home with me because I could imagine being asleep and then hearing a noise and going outside to check out what it was and then to see your truck on fire, you would be in such disbelief and you would uh, do whatever it took to get the truck put out. Of course, you want to go out there with a fire extinguisher, but if you've never used a fire extinguisher, you may not be able to use it. And that's where the author says that he's out in the yard in his underwear, bobbling the dumb extinguisher, too complex, it seemed, for putting out fires. And finally, he gets to the garden hose, and whenever he's starting to put his truck out, he looks down the road and sees this person watching him. This brings to mind me, and I want to know who this person is. Is this just a pyromaniac? I mean, this is the middle of West Virginia at four in the morning. Is this just a random act of violence, or has this gentleman done something to provoke this guy? Maybe he's with an ex-lover of his. Possibly a drug deal had gone wrong. Maybe they had crossed paths in the distance past, and um, this guy's done some kind of harm to him. So I think that the, the guy who tr set his truck on fire probably knows this gentleman and was out for revenge. And the imagery that keeps being presented is you know the next day he tells the police um, what's going on and he's he's still mad I mean he is still irate about this truck being caught on fire and he's got an axe in his hand and he's out in the road checking everybody who goes by obviously he's not gonna be able to identify who it is but you know he's still you know everybody that comes by is uh, guilty in his mind and then at the end of the poem you can just tell and feel the anger that he's looking to do heavy harm to this coward and promises to lay the sharp blade deep into his body and he's going to do this repeatedly and I could just imagine if he caught this guy that he would actually you know hack him into little bitty pieces and then 
at the very end, he's going to bury them in a small and bewildered grave, which just means he's going to hack them up, dig about two or three feet, and then lay what's left of them into a grave. And that's what I liked about this poem. Uh, you could feel the intensity picking up as the poem went on because there was not a lot of punctuation. In fact, the only period was at the very end, so you could just feel the intensity of the poem building up throughout, and that was the reason that I picked this poem.